Thank the Lord for so much. It's a blessed, beautiful day. I want to give a great shout out to the YouTube family. I hope everybody is doing well. And may God bless everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be so glad in it. I want to come back now and do this video comparing some of the things in Revelation to Ezekiel. I told y'all, we're going to stay on Revelation for a while. And we're going to, we're going to learn a lot to those who want to really learn. And I'm learning myself. Uh, we'll never know it all. We'll never know it all. But I want to show you how the revelation is always rolled through the Old Testament, especially Ezekiel and Daniel. You know, I like to call Ezekiel the old, I like to call Ezekiel like the old version of Revelation that's rolled in the New Testament. And uh, when you look at some of these events, same thing Ezekiel was talking about, same thing John was talking about in Revelation. So if you got a pen, I want you to write this stuff down and I'm going to go slow with it. For those who want to really study, you know, this is for you. Now, we, when we look at the throne vision in Revelation chapter 4, when John was describing the vision of the throne, remember John said he was in the spirit on that day of the Lord. Now, remember that. Well, we can see Ezekiel be in his visions also. Well, the throne vision around Revelation 4, when you look at Ezekiel 1, you will see the same thing being described. So compare Revelation 4 with Ezekiel 1. Revelation 4 with Ezekiel 1. Now let's talk about the book which had the seven seals in it in Revelation uh, chapter 5. Now you can go to Ezekiel chapter 2 and 3 and read about that same thing. Now remember the four plagues that we talked about in Revelation chapter 6. You can go to Ezekiel 5. See those same things. Remember the slaying under the altar. Who was those crying out in Revelation? Remember chapter 6? Who those, who those was crying out? How long, Lord, is it going to be before you come back and get us? Get those who killed us. And remember it was it said that it's going to be a few more killing. A few more. And they handed them the white robes. Remember John is saying things, past, present, and future. And then remember Ezekiel is the Old Testament. But they go right together with each other. Revelation, once again, means to reveal. So you can look at chapter uh, 6 of Ezekiel to see that same thing about the slain under the altar. Now, we all should know about the wrath of God. Still in Revelation 6. The wrath of God, you can go to Ezekiel 7, see that same thing. And then you can remember about in Revelation 7, the seal on the saint's forehead, where you'll see the same thing in Ezekiel 9. Ezekiel 9. Now, I just hope, this is just a little, you know, a little study that I do and uh, want to share it with the YouTube family. So whoever, I'm going to say it like Revelation to him, whoever, uh, let them remember, because I know most folks don't want to hear this. Now, you remember the, the measuring of the temple around Revelation 11. Well, you can go to Ezekiel 40 through 43 to see about that also. Now, Jerusalem and Sodom, which was in Revelation chapter 11, you can see the same thing in Ezekiel 16. Remember the cup of the wrath in Revelation 14? You can go to Ezekiel 23. So, the cup of the wrath, Revelation 14, Ezekiel 23. Now, I hope this is... Helping y'all out a little bit. The great harlot, which was in Revelation 17 and 18. You can see the same thing in Ezekiel 16 and 23. I'm looking at my little, my little outline up here that I like to do on that. And uh, remember the first resurrection described around Revelation 20, verses 4 through 6. Then you can go right to Ezekiel 37. Now we all should know now about the battle with Gog and Magog, what I spoke about in the other video. That's in Revelation 20. Then you can see the same thing in Ezekiel 38 through 39, which Ezekiel 38 is a very, very popular chapter people deal with. Now, when we talk about the new Jerusalem, the new heaven on earth in Revelation 21, right before the last book, we see that in Ezekiel 40 through 48. The river of life, which is the last chapter, book of the Bible, Revelation 22. We see Ezekiel 47, the same thing. So if you got a pen, you can write all of this down and compare Ezekiel with Revelation. Just like when I was comparing the seven trumpets 
in Revelation with the seven trumpets, the seven priests that Joshua was dealing with in his time. We you know when he was leading the children of Israel. So that's why I always tell people you cannot learn the Revelation, the Apocalypse. You would not learn that without learning the Old Testament. I mean, you gotta. It's always reflecting back to the Old Testament, and I'm gonna come back next and do one with the Book of Daniel. So this is just a little outline on how Ezekiel goes back with Revelation. Or should I say Revelation goes back with Ezekiel. Remember remember this, people. This is another thing I always tell people. We remember the disciples. We remember the apostles. We remember the prophets. All of those were very important. So whatever the Lord didn't tell the disciples, he told the apostles, and he told the prophets. So when you look at the prophets, the disciples, right there alone, the apostles, the disciples, and the prophets, the prophecies have already been fulfilled. See, this is just me personally. I'm going to say this before I get out of here. I don't have a whole lot of need for a prophet. Not me. I'm just being honest. And I hope that nobody take that the wrong way because I don't have no need for no prophet. And I don't have I don't care too much for people that's walking around calling themselves apostles neither. Because Jesus handpicked his apostles in his time. None of us, listen to what I'm saying. None of us was with Jesus, walking with Jesus. Paul was an apostle. So when you look in Revelation, which is what we are talking about now, remember the 24 elders sitting around the throne. Now listen to what I said, 24, where well, 12 and 12 make 24. Then you're going to talk about the 12 tribes of Israel, so on and so on. But when you look at those 24, or those 12 apostles, I'm just saying the number 24 because that's what was sitting around the throne. But in that 24, we all know what happened with Judas when he hung himself. Well, if you are an apostle walking around right now, how are you, Apostle? And whose spot are you taking in Revelation, sitting around the throne? Because I don't remember the Bible saying that God will be removing some of them people to replace them with some of us. Now, so you got to be careful who you who you got preaching to you and who telling you who's a, a apostle this and prophet that. Prophecies have already been fulfilled in the Bible. Ain't nothing, I'm just going to be honest, man, ain't, this is just me. Let me speak for myself. It ain't nothing somebody going to come up to me and tell me that the Lord has not already told me, spoke to me. That's all the prophet do anyway is confirm. Nowadays, I see more lost prophets asking other people for direction. That's why you got to be careful with all this prophesying. You got to be careful with this people laying hands on you. You got to be very careful because people... A lot of people doing this stuff are in their sins. They ain't even repenting. That's why I said in the other book, I mean in the other video, when you laid hands on folks and you wasn't pure, you wasn't clean, you had all them sins, you died back then. Even when you took the Lord's Supper, if you took the Lord's Supper in vain, you, you died or you got very sick. And I'm not trying to talk bad about nobody. I'm just speaking real right now. So with all that being said, God bless you and God keep you.